That's wonderful. What a wonderful feeling this is. <laughs> yes. Hello, night owls. I'm Winter, and this is my ultra flat core challenge. Yes, it is. I'm back in business. So I'm trying not to get hurt. As like the first thing I do is just getting hurt. Uh, that's east, so this is west. Woo! We're back in here in this endless field with. Uh, we are missing. 11 golden ingots so we have 11 golden ingots to go before settling down in the first village that we see that interests us and uh, try to build a gigantic pool table hooray that's such an interesting project isn't it oh, so how have you been this long two weeks that's almost three weeks now if I remember correctly, and uh, lots of stuff happened to me. I mentioned in a bit more details what happened to me, why I wasn't making videos anymore in my uh, recently uploaded episode of Pesty Parcel. If you didn't see that, it's fine. The summary of, of that is that I had issues with one thing and then with another then with another and I couldn't record anything and now the issues are not really fixed they're they've been like dealt with momentarily as long as this, as this solution works I'm happy so that's what I'm going to go with ah right so uh, I apologize in case the my voice quality is not yet perfect. I did test it a bit before uh, before recording, but still, you know, uh, it, it still requires like all things some more extra fine tuning, and I will do that in, uh, you know, slowly by getting feedback about this. And uh, there are no mobs anymore. Yeah, have, I, have I reached? Whoa! Have I reached the point where nothing spawns anymore? Oh, a village. <laughs> that's, that's, that's pretty interesting. I didn't think I, this has happened before. It's I was almost scared. I almost missed the slimes for a second there. So, there, there you have it. This is my first episode with this specific microphone. Uh, I've got, after, <laughs> after quite the adventure, I managed to finally get a new headset. So, uh new headphones and a new microphone and the microphone surprised me it's actually much better than i thought it would be with the kind of price i paid for so uh i'm not complaining at all and there are no smithies in here and we have a oh i need to trade with as always my first worry here is to find somebody who is willing to buy my wheat the wheat i stole in other villages this is business still from the poor to sell to the other poor or something. Well, now that we're back here, there's something I'd like to talk about. And I try usually to talk about... Uh, well, let, I, I mean, I mean that the entire point of making commentary during a video is to either talk about something interesting or something funny or something happy, something that the people would care to hear about. Uh, in this specific case, it's not something happy. Uh, at least not the first part of it. I, and it's a slightly deeper kind of thing than, than I usually talk about. Because sometimes I think about serious things too. <laughs> well, this may not be serious to you guys. Well, it depends, I guess, on the... You know what? I, I, uh, I'm just going to start talking about it and just call it a day. Because what I want to talk about is something every single one of us, uh, at least after a certain age, uh, thinks about uh, and worries about and uh, has to deal with every day and has to build our life around it and this thing 
is, of course, money. Uh, nobody wants to buy my wheat as usual, and I haven't seen a smithy yet in here either. That's a shame. Unless I, unless I missed it. Oh well. Right, money. Probably, I, you know, I'm going to ask you something. Can you recall the first time in your life when you realized that money, or to be more precise, a lack of money, could have made you sad, could have uh, ruined something for you or prevented you from doing things. Do you remember when the first time was when you realized that not having money meant not having other things? So not having money would have been a bad thing and it was supposed to be avoided? Because I mean, I, I think all of us ha had that one day when they want that one toy in that one shop and our parents didn't want to buy that for us. Not because they, didn't, uh, they didn't think we deserved it, we did not do good enough of school to deserve a new toy or, uh, or just they didn't think it was uh, a toy that we were supposed to have or anything else. But just the fact that the toy costed a bit too much. Uh, it pr you, you probably let this happen at least once in your lifetime with either a toy or something else that you wanted and then your parents just went no it costs too much or no we can't afford it right now and you know you were a kid so you just got a bit angry and a bit sad and you wouldn't talk to your parents for the next minute or for the next hour or for as long as you would uh, remember is happening then you would go back to worrying about things kids worry about uh, I'm pretty sure this happened to uh, every one of us once it's definitely not something traumatic that you would remember for the rest of your lifetime but uh, uh, you can most likely recall something like this happening to you and I want to tell you a story about the first time when I realized for the first time as a kid that not having money uh, would prevent me from doing things. But in this case, it's something a bit bigger than not getting a toy. It's something, it's the day, and actually the two days, but they're very similar things, so I'm going to tell about both of those. The days when I realized that not having... Sorry, I was my phone. And <laughs> that not having money meant that I would not be able to do something I was putting all of my heart into and no matter how much I care about it uh, there was no way I could uh, save whatever I was trying to do it's something a bit more important than you know not getting a toy as I mentioned so uh, instead of being generic about it I'm just going to tell you about it when I was a kid I was an incredibly energetic kid. Well, many kids are energetic, but you know how the cliche goes. If you play video games, you're fat and lazy. <laughs> and it, even though I, uh, I've been playing video games for as long as I can remember, uh, I didn't conform to the cliche, to the stereotype. Uh, instead, uh, I loved playing many, many kind of sports. Uh, in, in fact, the only reason why I never uh, joined a uh, football, a soccer team, was just because my mother didn't want me to. Oh, uh, um, don't hold it against her, she's a good mother, don't, <laughs> don't worry about it. Uh, so yeah, I loved soccer, or football, whatever you call it, you weird English people with different names for different things, for the same things. Uh, instead, I, I ended up playing two sports, two other sports that my mother was okay with. <laughs> Those two sports are basketball and tennis, which is pretty interesting because they are two completely different sports and I love them both for completely different reasons, but I like them both and I was, I, you know, I had a, uh, what's it called, a coach, a trainer for uh, tennis and I was playing in a team for basketball and even when I, you know, I, I, when I was a kid, my parents would move around a lot and they would change schools a lot and stuff. But no matter where I went, 
and how many different schools uh, I went to, I would still be playing in the new city, town, whatever. I would still be playing those two things in different teams with different people, but I liked uh, playing tennis and basketball very, very much. Uh, you know, I was a kid, so uh, I was, I had my little dreams of becoming uh, a great tennis player, a famous basketball player, of winning many competitions, and um, you know how the story goes. Let's see if there's a sm is that a skeleton in that house? Oh no, it's not. <laughs> I thought I had uh, caught a glimpse of a ninja skeleton, but it was just a testificate. Wow, are there no smithies generated in this part of the world? <laughs> Okay, hey, this is going to take a while. Mm-hmm. So there what happened was there came the day one day when my mother called me and told me that uh, I had to choose between playing tennis or basketball because uh, she couldn't afford anymore to let me play both of those things at the same time. That is the day when I realized just what, uh, how terrible a lack of money can be for my life. I mean, it, it wasn't something as important as not being able to go to college or... or anything else, paying the rent or <laughs> important adult things like that, but I was a kid and I was heartbroken. T both tennis and basketball were very uh, smithy, were very important things to me and I was putting all of my heart into those two. And when I had to choose, because my family couldn't afford to let me play both of those things anymore, hooray for gold! Oh, I was told something to do something very important by the way, so I might as well do it now. When I was told that I had to choose, uh, yeah, heartbroken is really the uh, the term for that. Uh, it, it, it was just terrible, very sad, a very very sad thing. There, yeah, now I can pick up extra iron. Um, or not? I need to give up uh, one sword if I want to get my crafting table back. So I had to make this terrible choice. Hello there. And that was the first time as a kid I realized that no matter how much I cared about something I wanted to build my life around, build my life on, base my life on, it, it didn't matter how much I cared about playing basketball and tennis, I just couldn't do it anymore. I couldn't do both of those things anymore. <laughs> if you ever had to give up on something because of a lack of money, you then you know what I'm talking about. You you can relate, you know how what this feeling is like. It's a feeling of helplessness. Because you can't even blame anybody for that. It's it was nobody's fault. It wasn't my mother's fault. We weren't poor by any means, but it, w it was just outside of our, of our possibilities. <laughs> it, w it was... I, I just kept crying for days. I had been playing both tennis and basketball for years and... I, I had to give up one of those two? J just for what? W you know, cartoons and books teach me that dreams are important and you're supposed to be realize to 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 do your best to realize your dreams but how could i realize my dream of becoming a great basketball player or a great tennis player if i couldn't play anymore that i i i couldn't give myself an explanation a reason why it would happen i couldn't find a solution i just felt so helpless I could not understand why that was happening. So I had to choose and I chose to give up on basketball because, well, you know, to, to play both of those things you require things. You require a tennis uh, racket and you need uh, 
what's it called a, a field a, a court you need a place to be able to play there and i thought I, I thought to myself that if i did not follow uh if i did not play tennis in a slightly more professional way if i stopped doing that uh, i would not be able to rent uh, spaces to play tennis just on my own sometimes just to have fun so uh i thought it instead with basketball i could just uh, grab a basketball and I, <laughs> I could go outside of the uh, uh, of my school and just whoa whoa, whoa wait uh, uh, the chest is here I'm cheating my way th whoa <laughs> lots of armor uh, any other smithy yeah I don't know I just thought that it would have been easier to play to keep playing basketball even without playing basketball <laughs> Uh, so I decided to uh, keep playing tennis and that was it. I had my own very sad experience with the what uh, a lack of money can can cost to you. And that was it. Then came the day, years later, when we couldn't afford to let me play tennis anymore either. And I had to give that up too, for exactly the same reason, we just couldn't afford it. And I was a, big, a bit older by then, but the feeling of helplessness that I felt was exactly just as deep and terrifying and sad and all these kind of bad things as, uh, as the other time, as the first time. Again, I couldn't give myself an explanation. I couldn't find a solution. I just had to give up doing something I really, really loved to do. I, I just had to. And there was nothing I could do about it. I'm not tearing up, I swear. <laughs> ah. I'm going somewhere with this, I swear. Now another thing a bit related to all of this uh, talk. Again, when I was a kid, I did not just enjoy playing tennis ball, uh, tennis ball, yeah, tennis ball and basket. <laughs> I did not just enjoy playing, but also I enjoyed watching uh, matches in TV. You know, I had my favorite tennis player that I would always try to watch whenever he was playing and stuff and i remember the first times i would watch uh tennis players play their own matches they would like get on the field court oh i really am not sure how it's called <laughs> dang it gold no gold but i'll take the bread they would like start playing and then after 30 minutes 40 minutes a bit longer or a bit less depending on the cases they would go back to their seats they would put away their tennis racket and they would take another one still in its package and they would open it and play with it and then after some more time sometimes they would do it again and again sometimes opening even five new rackets per match and then so really surprised my little naive young childlike mind and I would be like wow those guys can afford to buy all those rackets every time they, they play a game I was really impressed they're, they're, they're very rich I told myself why they have to be so rich because I, I only could afford to buy one racket I only had one tennis racket my entire life and I treated it with the utmost care. So whenever I saw a tennis player get angry because he missed a shot and would just throw its racket on the ground, I, I was <laughs> I, I, I was just baffled and speechless at how they could I, how they could afford to do that. So that that was surpri very surprising to me. But my mind was blown even more when I realized that no. 
they were not so rich that they could afford to buy all those rackets every time they played a match. But in fact, those rackets were given to them as a gift by the very same guys who make those rackets and they would even be paid to use them for their matches. And not only for their rackets, they even their clothes, they were, they were paid to wear those clothes while playing tennis. They did not have to buy anything on their own. Not it, it wasn't just a matter of being rich, but they were even being paid to do that. And as a kid, I just could not explain, I, I could not understand why that was working, why that was happening. And I, 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 would, I would ask sometimes for my parents for an explanation, I just would not get it. So of course, growing up, I understood <coughs> how advertisement and sponsors work that like if I make shirts and an important person like a singer or an actor uh, wears my shirts, <coughs> lots of people are going to see in television that person wearing that shirt and I I I it's like an advertisement and more, per more people are going to buy my shirts uh, as a consequence of that. So I might as well pay famous people to wear my shirts because it's a form of advertisement. And that's how a simplified way of how sponsoring works. <coughs> As a kid, I did not know all the things that happened, uh, what the explanation for that was, but I just knew as a general rule that a professional tennis player, and then as I grew up, I learned that it happens with singers, actors, uh, even artists of any kind, any professional player of any sport, uh, that's when I, 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 I knew somehow, even if I couldn't yet quite uh, ex uh, understand why, I knew that if you were famous enough and good enough of what you were doing, people would pay you to do that. Uh, usually jobs work the other way around. You, you, you have a job <laughs> and you, you, you try to find that job so that you can get paid and live with that money. And But with artists and uh, sports players and uh, similar careers of the sort, uh, it, it was, it worked a bit different. You wouldn't be paid to play unless you were really famous. And at that point, yes, there, there, there were also the, the money you would get by winning tournaments and things like that. But th th that's unrelated. Oh, wow, uh, those slime in here is not selling you my wheat. Sorry, guy. Mm, this relates back to the thing I was talking at the beginning of this video. Oh man, nobody wants to buy my... Oh, sprint please. Oh wow. Nobody wants to buy my wheat. This relates back to what I was talking about at the beginning. Because uh, when I had to give up on playing basketball, and uh, even later when I had to give up on playing tennis, uh, both of those times, I thought to myself, that if only I had been good enough at playing tennis, at playing basketball, I wouldn't have had to spend money to do that. Because I if I were famous enough, the, the opposite would happen and other people would pay me to do that. They would pay me to go and play that one tournament in that one country. It, it, it was the, if I had been good enough of what I was doing, other people would pay me to do that. And I wouldn't have had to give up on what I was doing just because I did not have the money to do that anymore. So, uh, remember, I was a kid, I thought, oh, finally. I thought my reasoning made sense. <laughs> and uh, I didn't know that what I was thinking about was, I mean, uh, you, you can't be, I mean, you can be 11 years old and be a genius of what you're doing, but I was like, uh, it, it wasn't my case and it was much more difficult than I thought it would have been. So I realized it was a bit of a uh, not really uh, working reasoning, but I still blame myself. I still thought it was my fault that we c I had to give up those two sports because I hadn't been good enough at those. And so it was my fault. Of 
course, then I grew up. <laughs> I had a slightly better of an understanding of how the world worked. I still don't quite do. I'm trying my best. <laughs> I'm still very silly, very childlike. I still have a very childlike mentality. I'm still very naive. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to deal with it. <laughs> still, this, is, this was my first experience with uh, what uh, not having money would have meant uh, for my life, for the things I really cared about. Uh, And to summarize, I thought two things. The first thing that uh, not having money to do something you really enjoy would have completely ruined and destroyed all of your chances to keep doing what you enjoy. And the fact that if only I'd been better at what I was doing, if only I'd been famous enough and good enough at what I was doing, then I wouldn't have had that issue. Those were the two things that uh, were in my mind when I had uh, to give up those two sports. Of course, I had more experiences with uh, what uh, a lack of money can do to your life after those, but y you don't need to know everything about my life. I'm just going to share those two because they are related and they're not too personal. This guy is running away from me. <laughs> He's trying to protect his chest. Wow, I can't believe I have a stack of obsidian. You know, one thing I keep forgetting to pick up is the black wool from the lanterns. Uh, eh. Come here, you. Might as well grab some extra torches. Okay, now go away. Where I'm going with all of this talk uh, is to two, almost three weeks ago when my headset broke and I couldn't record videos any longer. I'm 20 by now. As I said, I'm not a kid anymore. Well, mostly I try not to be anymore. But when that happened, I felt again those exact two things that I felt and thought about uh, when I had to give up playing tennis and basketball. When I could not record videos for my channel any longer, I thought to myself two things. One, that not having the money to do something you really care about and you really put your heart and your mind and your time into is incredibly sad and unfair and not right and nobody should ever feel like that ever because nobody in the world deserves to feel that feeling and the the childish idea the childish thought uh, that if only if only i had been better at making videos if only i had been such a, a good let's player to to the point where i had hundreds thousands of subscribers that cared about my videos, then I if only I'd been, you know, the, 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 the generic word for this, I guess it's famous. If only I'd been famous enough, like those tennis players that don't have to buy their own tennis rackets anymore, uh, instead of having to give up on recording videos, maybe my own subscribers would have uh, would have solved the issue for me or if not the subscribers just the fact that I don't know I have a YouTube partnership and that is enough to uh, to finish it uh, <laughs> my my YouTube channel and I would be able to deal with any kind of issue like uh, this one it, it was just the very childish dreamlike idea of uh, if only I had been famous enough you know, there are many Let's Players I follow that only or mostly play just video games that their own subscribers buy for them because they have so many subscribers that really enjoy what I do that they want to see them play this one game or that one game so they just buy it for them because why not? So that they, they, they're willing to give money for something that after all is their own entertainment. It, it works. There lots of 
YouTubers can live out of that. It's really as close to a job as, uh, as the definition of a job can get. And I, I, even though I'm 20, even though I know a bit better that uh, I, I started making videos in, uh, I think in June, and I have already gotten very far from uh, for the average person who tries to start a YouTube channel. So I, I shouldn't blame myself for anything. I think I did a, a decent job up until this point, and still I couldn't stop thinking about the fact that if only I'd been better. I wouldn't have had to give up on making videos. I'm not tearing up, I said. <laughs> oh boy. I'm sorry I'm talking about sad things, but sometimes people just have to, you know? Uh, oh, and before you misinterpret what I'm trying to say here, also this is an incredibly long episode. Uh, you can... You can consider this like the, 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 uh, my way to apologize for not uploading videos for so long. I'm, I'm catching up on the missed, on the missed uh, episodes and time. Before you misinterpret what I'm trying to say, let me clarify that I uh, do not, I am not saying that I expected you, ca you guys to do things for me. I do not have any expectation from you guys whatsoever i'm not expecting you to give me your money for making videos i it's this is not what i mean it, it really isn't uh it's just the childlike idea of being famous enough uh, of not having to worry about money anymore that's the feeling i had whenever i watched my favorite tennis player playing tennis and uh, <laughs> being able to just throw his racket on the ground if he was mad because he didn't have to think to care about that specific issue anymore. I I it's just that kind of uh, of naive, dreamlike thinking. <laughs> now, a couple of days after my headset broke, something happened. And what happened was that one person that I'm, whose name I'm not going to mention offered to buy me a new headset for the sake of uh, allowing me to go back to making videos for YouTube. And this person is not somebody I know in person. He actually, I barely talked to him or her uh, by then. I, I, uh, she or he was almost almost a stranger by then, just somebody who enjoyed the videos I made and was sad about the fact that I was not able to make videos anymore and was willing to do exactly to, to do exactly what I'm talking about, was willing to, to, help, me, to help me out. And that blew my mind because even though while wow, we're close to our objective, even though that was what I was sort of dreaming about and uh, to be honest it was also the only way I could see myself getting out of that very difficult situation. Even though that was exactly what I was sort of hoping and dreaming for, I wasn't expecting, wow, we're only three ingots away from our objective. I wasn't expecting anybody to actually do that. And in the next days, two other people Again, two persons that I do not know personally and are simply persons who enjoy what I do for YouTube. Two other persons, once they discovered about my issues, had made exactly that same kind of offer for me. They were willing to, to, like, to help me out with their own money for it. Uh, to allow me to go back to recording videos, to buy me a, a new microphone. I, I knew headphones and then there was the sound card issue they were willing to help with with that too and you, you i i wish i i knew more words in the english language to describe just the kind of feeling that was because if the if the idea of having to give up something i really love to do uh because of money was like the most terrible feeling in the world 
having those three persons come to me and say, we're willing to help you out, uh, it was the complete opposite of that. It was just pure joy that I can't even start to describe. The happiest thing that has happened to me in such a long time. So to those, to those three persons, you guys know who I'm talking about. Uh, so I'm going to thank you even here publicly in my videos from the bottom of my little uh, childlike naive art because I really really appreciate your offer even though I uh, I did not accept any of those three offers because I still do not feel like I deserve this I, I, I don't think I'm you know that uh, quote-unquote famous to deserve people paying me for making videos for YouTube I don't think I've reached that point yet and that's why I refused and I still tried to solve the issue on my own and in the end it took me a while but in the end I did it but still that was you you have with your offer you have you have realized that kind of very naive and, and childish dream that I had of uh, of one day reaching a point where people would just you know being the, like that one tennis player <laughs> it, it, it's just amazing and <laughs> I I just feel like crying for how happy I am about that. Really, I'm trying my best not to, because I don't want to cry while I record a video, either by s uh, because of sadness or by happiness. I just don't want to. But I want you guys just to know that you have made my day and week and month, and it's just amazing and wonderful, and the world is slightly brighter place now. <laughs> Uh, so I'm still not done with this, but I'm trying to I'll try to be done before sunset uh, The last thing I want to mention is that I in these three weeks I have been thinking Also because I had nothing else to do <laughs> I this sounds funny. I have been thinking my computer right now it's all it's open all over the floor and with the cables and stuff running all over the place and it really looks like uh, it really looks like uh, uh, a patient on a hospital bed barely breathing with it, with it with his heart barely beating and uh, hanging between life and death and sometimes while I play Minecraft while I'm doing something, I, I just can't hear it like coughing. <laughs> and I, I have to pause everything like this and just be like, here, here, take, take, take a quick break and, and just uh, slow down, breathe slowly and deeply. Take your time, you can do it. Don't die on me, please don't die on me. <laughs> and sometimes I can hear it stuttering and I... I uh, I just feel like, oh god, this is the time, it's giving up on me now. <laughs> and, well, it's working right now, <laughs> but I have no doubts that uh, it's really nearing the, the, the end of its life. Uh, so it's not a matter of if, but a matter of when, and it could be tomorrow, like it could be in, uh, I don't know, maybe I estimate six months. I'm not really sure, depends on how lucky I am and if something breaks down, it, if, if it's something that is not too pricey, I could fix the, the issue and keep going for a little longer. But still, my computer is old and slow and I'm really pushing it to its limits and the day will come when my computer will just die and uh, if uh, a miracle does not happen in the meantime, uh, I will not be able to afford to buy a new one. I'm not going to talk about whether my job pays me enough or not, whether uh, I'm working enough or not right now. I'm not going to talk uh, too much <laughs> anymore about my personal life anymore. But this, situ this is the situation right now. And I don't think I would be able to get out of, uh, uh, of this problem when my computer will finally, you know exhale his last breath and just uh, and just die on me and it will be tragic uh, and stuff uh, and not being able to record videos for so long made me think uh, what will I do when the day will come like with the tennis and the basketball b business 
What will I do when they will come when I will not be able to afford to record videos any longer? And I just will have to give up on my YouTube channel. What will I do then? And my answer three weeks ago and today is still the same. My answer is I will lock myself in my room and cry myself to sleep. <laughs> That's what I will do. So since as I mentioned uh, I probably will not be able to get out of that situation when that will happen. Oh yeah, I already have a stack of wheat. Do you want to buy it, please? I have however decided one thing and this thing is something that uh, I did not have the time to decide and do when, the, when I had to give up on uh, playing tennis and basketball but it's something I now have the time to do and I've thought about it so I can do it now and what I want to do what I want to do is I want to put my heart and my time and my thoughts into this YouTube channel much, much, much more than I had with the tennis and basketball when I was still playing them. I want to dedicate all of my free time and all of my focus and concentration, all, everything I can give to this YouTube channel, I want to give it and I want to just do my, my very, 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 very best so that when a day will come when my computer will die whether I will be able to afford a new one or not, at least I will be able to look back and be like, well, with the time and tools I had at my disposal, I did my absolute best and there is nothing I regret. The, the one thing I really care about is that uh, when I will reach a point, I will not have any regrets. That's what I want to do. And if by then I will have uh, still 80 subscribers or 80,000, <laughs> uh, and whether I will be able to afford a new computer or my own subscribers will be able to afford a new computer for me or if I, I will not and I will just have to give up on making this for YouTube at least I will not think like I did with the tennis and basketball thing I will not think that maybe I could have done be more that maybe I could have uh, just uh, tried a bit harder and be a, a bit better and maybe I could have reached a better point by then and wouldn't have had to give up on doing what I like to do. I want to, I do not want to have that regret when a day will come that my, my computer will die. That's what, I, that's what this whole gigantic episode of Ultra Flat Core is about. I don't want to have any regrets in the end. So that's a promise I'm making you guys. And I hope I did not bore you to death with all of this. And I know I've talked for a bit too much and I, it was tough that it was a bit sadder than it should have been. I hope, uh, I really hope I did not bore you too much and that you're still hanging in there and listening to what I'm saying right now and you did not leave like 30 minutes ago. <laughs> Thank you for hanging with me. You are all amazing. I love you all so very much. Thank you for being there and watching my videos and I will see you in the next episode of Ultra Flat Core. We're only three golden ingots away from our uh, objectives so probably the next episode will be the last one where I will just be running in one direction that's pretty amazing have an awesome day and I will see you next time